So I'm Rajat. Uh, I am a JavaScript and iOS developer. I work with Agile Packs. Apart from that, I run my own startup, which is Pool My Rides. It's a ride-sharing app. And I'm going to talk about Ionic framework today. So before we start, uh, let's see what is the problem. Uh, has it happened to you? You wake up in the morning and you get a very nice idea and you think that, yes, I want to develop it through a mobile app. How many of you experienced that? That this, this is a major necessity. It, it has not been implemented yet, right? So we get those ideas every day. But then we go beyond that and we think, we start thinking that, oh, we have to develop it on Android, iOS, Windows, which is a big market, according to Microsoft, and web as well. So this, uh, then you think further, oh, I need to hire freelancer developers, or I have to hire my own company uh, and start my own team. Uh, but that involves a lot of costs. If you don't want to do that, you are a you know, full stack developer. You want to do it on your own. You start making every platform app on your own, but that involves time. Until then, somebody would have copied your idea and published the app to the customers. This is, uh, next to this is, if you uh, develop everything according to what you plan, you still need to write a lot of test cases and handle different test scenarios in each of the platforms, right? So after all this friction, ultimately your idea reaches the audience and the idea is not what you intended initially. It has some other, it is serving some other purpose, or it has a lot of bugs for, on different platforms for different customer segments. So this is a major uh, you know, drawback of today's technology that you want to bootstrap an idea and it is way too difficult or it takes a lot of time. So what if we could combine everything into a single pipeline and bring it on a single language, single framework, and deployed everywhere. That's what Ionic does. Uh, it gives you a single code base where you can write single test cases and distribute app among your testers or friends, and then release it to public. So what is Ionic? Ionic is, I, I would say in a plain, simple language, is combination of Angular and PhoneGap. If you have heard of PhoneGap, PhoneGap is kind of a framework which bridges a web view to the native features of mo your mobile phone SDK. So they did a good part, like uh, they started uh, five to six years back and they have been running successfully. But still, user had to write their own UI, design it on the HTML side, and then there were you know, bugs related to uh, what all frameworks you are using in your code base when you're developing HTML JavaScript apps. And or what the plugins have been implemented on. So there's always a mismatch. And Angular is a modern framework about, uh, on Java, for JavaScript and HTML. It gives you good features and good design patterns like uh, dependency, injection, and services control, clean separation of concerns. So uh, the INEC gives the power of both to you. It is AngularJS plus PhoneGap combined into one tool chain. Gives you fantastic CLI. You can set up a new app and start coding uh, and you know start a, template, a templated app on your own with just the command line. It has SAS support. SAS gives you a modular way to write uh, CSS and a reusable way to write CSS, if you've heard of SAS. Rich icon collection. You need not go to a graphic designer as well, that I need these icons in my app. Please give them. There's a rich set of uh, icon uh, which is included and the Ionic website and portal. Then there is Ionic Creator. A lot of SDKs have uh, this drag and drop features of developing apps, right? If you worked on Xcode or Android Studio or Visual Studio, they, so it gives you that as well, out of the box, and it runs on the browser. You can just open a URL and start making your app there. Then there is Ionic Play. This is a very good feature. Uh, if you have worked on uh, iOS development or some Android development, you have to have some certificates. You have to sign up as a developer on their portal. And it will take a lot of uh, days to ultimately, when you are ready to share the app with your friends or your test testing team. But Ionic uh, uh, Play gives you a simple 
uh, way to share an app ID with your uh, friends or testers, and then they can just enter the app ID and they can view your app uh, out of the box straight there and then. Ionic push gives you inbuilt, uh, uh, you know, Angular services or modules to implement push notifications in your app. Then an analytics are included for for analyzing your user uh, interactions and all. Then Ionic deploy is um, uh, this is your latest feature where uh, if you have uh, uh, you know uh, already developed an app, you know that the review cycle from the app store takes about 10 to 15 days before Apple uh, you know tests the app on your the new version of your app and then they say that yes it is ready to be released. So Ionic deploy will just give you a seamless experience where you can just publish a new version of your app uh, within seconds. So what it does is it downloads the latest code into the container on which your app is running, and your customers will see a latest version without the app store review or anything. So uh, let's start uh, playing with Ionic. This is a simple command to install Ionic if you are familiar with NPM. NPM is a node package manager, and you can install it via this. Uh, NPM install a minus G. Minus G stands for global. It's a global module. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Node and NPM? Okay. So this is kind of a necessity for web developers in today's day. So NPM and Node gives you a lot of modules for web development and Node.js development. So let me uh, just show you how we can do that. Okay. My uh, Ionic is already installed, I guess, so it will say this is a simple command. Let it install. Let's go to the next slide. So then. then these are the few templates which it gives you uh, out of the box. You can start a templated app, and it's Ionic Start My App Blank App, and there is a Tabs app and Side Menu app. These uh, These are the main navigation schemes which every app follows, uh, if you've seen playing around with your mobile apps. So we'll be doing a side menu app. Let's see how it works and how much time we take to develop it. I guess there's some problem with the internet. So it's already installed. Uh, let's just kill it and Ionic start. That's the command. That's the best way to check the internet. So it has already linked the side menu template to a already existing code base on GitHub, and it is downloading that. How many of you have heard about Ionic before? And have experience developing AngularJS apps? It's funny, I'm talking about AngularJS and jQuery constantly. <laughs> we can just kill this. Uh, I have already checked it out. I knew this would come up. So it's under JQ demo. So this is the folder which it creates after downloading your app. So I just need to do Ionic serve under this. Let's 
Are you guys able to read it? No. Yeah. So it created an app and just started running the instance. So it created a side menu app without any coding and all at all. You have various use cases covered uh, while uh, you know playing around with the app. You can go inside. So this is what the template does. Let's look, have a look at uh, what the code looks like. Uh, open it up in WebStorm. How many of you are fond of WebStorm? Only one percent. Sublime Tech. Everybody plays around. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna. This is our index HTML. Let's. As a web developer, we always start with index.html. And if you're familiar with uh, Angular, you always have a module, and you start with that, right? And this is my app. Starting. Ion nav view. I want to start with the navigation view. So, sorry. Inject uh, as in yes yes I'll, I'll come to that yeah so under JS it already uh, includes built-in code where your app is app code is written so. So these are your app states. Uh, I'll come to that. But before diving deep into the code, I'll tell you how the code is organized. We start with index.html. And we have an ion nav view, which I showed you under index.html. It has, uh, we have not included ion nav bar because we don't want a nav bar while we are on the main view of the app. We want it. Uh, on when we are at the side content, right? If you see the hamburger menu there, we want it there, the nav bar, just the nav bar. But we want the nav view so that we can uh, play around with, we can put this whole thing inside that nav view. Now we have menu.html, which I'll come to that. But uh, think of it is that uh, under ion nav view, we have ion side menus, which is the whole thing, which will, which has two components. One is side content. And one is the side menu. And this is the ion side menu content, uh, which is on the right. So it is kind of organized in the same way uh, if you have developed an Xcode or iOS or an Android app. So you have good hierarchy of view containers. Then it has an another, another ion nav bar. Here we are including it because we want the nav title to be shown. And it has an ion nav view, that portion. And on the left, we have the ion side menu. So these are kind of HTML tags through which uh, we can just include these components into our app. So I'll go back to the code. So we have a state which says app. And it has a template of menu.html, right? And it's, it's kind of an abstract state. I'll come to that. Abstract states are the states where, which contain child states, but you cannot directly navigate to them. So going to menu.html, so you see that we have ion side, uh, side menus. And then we have ion side menu content. And then uh, if I close this, I, we have ion side menu on the left side. So in that, inside the content, we will write our rest of the code. So under this, I should have an eye on nav bar with the bar table. This is for coloring theming. And this is my eye on nav view with a handle called menu content. Now, this is the key part. This menu content is used back in our app initialization 
where I say my child views will be attached to this portion, menu content, and they will have this template. So it's kind of tricky right now, but uh, once you go and learn about Angular UI router, this is how it works. It manages states in a hierarchical fashion, and you can navigate to them in a, a hierarchical way, and it will cache the views for you. So coming back to our, everybody on board, right? Any doubts, any questions? Yeah, yeah Ionic sets it up. Exactly. Yes. Sorry? Yes. Yes. No, these are uh, unique to Ionic. Ionic has included them. And Ionic in its bundle includes an Angular version it's, uh, as well. So you need not include an Angular link under script tag in your HTML. So they have their own uh, Angular version, which they include in their own bundle. Yes, these are Ionic. Yeah. So uh, my next slide talk, uh, talks about that. So components. So these are components which we can use uh, through HTML tags or CSS classes. So they don't require any JavaScript functionality. You can just include them, and they will work out of the box. So these are called Ionic components. So Ion navbar and Ion side menu, these are components. But there are some functionalities which require JavaScript or which need a callback that a button was clicked, and you need to run your own custom code in that callback. So those things are called Ionic services. So I'll give an example of both, how, how they work. So let's go back to our code. And this is the state of our application right now. Uh, let's try to edit uh, something in. OK, another instance is already running. Okay. So this is our search screen right now. So I'll go to uh, the search app, and I'll see where is search linked to. Search is linked to under templates, search.html. I'll go there. It's, it just has a heading. I'm going to change that. And let's use a slide view component, which INIC provides. So you see, it, sorry to use Jim Carrey. <laughs> so it instantly updated the view which was running. You need not run the server again, and you know. So Ionic serve is doing that part. It uh, watches your code and reloads that. So this is the Ionic view. So you can have a slide box. You 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 would see this in a lot of apps, right? But it comes right up to, out of the box with Ionic, and there are a lot of components. Uh, there are calendars, then there are sliders, then there are buttons. A uh, lot of UI components which you'll get into in native SDKs. So uh, one of the other major components which we use is a list. Let's try to build a list. So 
let's uh, let me show you how you can use the ionic website to do that ah internet is not working so this is uh, an ion list uh, you just give I, 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 w I could have used ion list as well but you can uh, use via classes as well so let me use it the class way and this is the item which I want to show um, so if we say blah blah Slide box. So it's not giving image, right? Let's give some image. Let me give my image. So it gives you a nice list. So if you want to uh, you know have a lot of elements you can use ng repeat or collection repeat inside that how many of you are familiar with ng repeat yeah. it's a nice utility no need to write for loops so let me show you an example okay so under this let's add another controller to this See my search screen it has not been attached to any controller yet. I'm building a controller so that I can uh, write code, fetch a list from server, and update my view accordingly. These are all Angular concepts, nothing new in Ionic. Ionic just provides you a UI framework. So how are we going with the time? What's the time right now? <laughs> dependencies then a function to catch hold of dependencies okay and I write scope dot items is equal to an array name blah blah title is my items array so scope is a kind of a very you know magical variable in angular js it will reflect all the variables attached to it in the view so i have this element and i want to do Just filling this array. So our controller is done now, and we need to attach it under app. Okay, I've already done that. And under our search HTML, now that items is av available for us. So ng repeat. We 
have the list rotate. So I just uh, attach a controller to this view on my app.js where I set up the whole navigation. The controller is just making a random list of objects and that I can access in the view because I attach the controller to this view, to the scope a variable. So, and uh, if you see that a uh, lot of web hybrid apps have an issue with scrolling of lists, right? So uh, Ionic has done a better way to manage this. Uh, what they do is they don't create all the ele elements as they are shown. They only create the elements which are shown uh, on the viewport. So if you keep scrolling, it will keep destruct destructing the HTML elements. But other frameworks will not do that. So it is out of the box. Uh, instead of ng re repeat, you just need to use collection repeat. That's it. So it is. It, this is a very nice utility if you are, you know, uh, concerned about scrolling of your app and all. So let's come back to our uh, this thing. Yeah. So next is services. Services. I'm going to give you an example of how to show an action sheet. So if you see that the UI is uh, closely matching to uh, what an iOS UI feels like, or an Android, it it will change accordingly if it's on an Android device or on an iOS device. It, it picks up the CSS accordingly. So I'm going to show you how to use an Ionic service. So we have, let's use it under browse. The HTML is so fresh. Or we can use it, we have to write another controller. So now I need to include a button here, which will have a functionality to show an action sheet from bottom. So what I can do is, under my nav view, in search HTML only, I can just say ion nav buttons. I can remove this part. So I'm creating ion nav buttons. I'm saying it, it should have a right side view. And it should have a button. And a button of search, or I can give this. A title. So let us see what we have right now. It's not showing up for some reason. Uh, for some reason, this is not working. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> so services is like uh, you have a jQuery or a JavaScript access to showing on custom clicks, something. Yeah. Uh, yes, they have. So if you open Ionic documentation, they have a bunch of uh, features listed, and they have a mobile app showing the features live. So you can play around with that. And uh, but this internet is not working. So OK, let's move on. Next is theming. So I want to change the coloring of my app, right? Uh, so Ionic gives uh, the support for SAS, but it is not uh, included when you start a new Ionic app. You have to do it uh, um, after that. So yeah, it's up. So let's do that. Ionic setup. 
us. So see, everything is in, uh, can be done through the command line. Even the CSS functionality or s starting a new template. I'll show you other features like sharing with your friends, right? That can also be done through the command line. So I already had, uh, I have a demo project which we can use for further. So when you do uh, this thing, INX setup SAS, it gives you a new folder and gives you access to write your custom variables, SAS variables in this uh, SAS file. So uh, INX works on, the whole app works on a bunch of uh, variables, like these are the themes which you can apply, and you can apply new colors to your theme. Uh, so we have been using stable theme, you've seen ion bar stable, right? So I can assign a new color to that. And let me run this. This is a side app, right? I make so. So see, it has given a black or a gray color to the wherever the stable class would have been used. So there are other variables and in, uh, included under this file ionic base file and you can write your new variable values here and it will override that so you can give theming to your app from here from this point okay coming to unit testing so unit testing is also a major part these days and and i love this part because with unit testing you can freely move your app idea to experiment new ideas because you don't have to think about yes if my code will be breaking or not so automated testing uh, uh, take uh, case of uh, takes care of that, but unit testing is not that uh, much you know seamless. If you're using a native app, iOS app or an Android app, you have to write separate unit tests and maintain them separately. Uh, so I'm going to show you an example. I'm um, I'm going to use Karma. Karma is a test runner, and uh, I'm going to use uh, this uh, Jasmine framework for testing, for assertion and all that. So, and uh, just show you an example. So, this can be done through the command line. First, I need to install Karma locally. Again, npm stuff. I know some people would have <laughs> say that. What is this? This I'm going to save a dependency here. I've already done this, so I'm not going to run this. Then it will be Karma Launcher, uh, Chrome Launcher, because I want to run my test in Chrome browser. Then it's going to be uh, Karma Jasmine. Okay, these things. Once I, I've done that, so. cannot install it in the new dependency because internet is not working. So I'll just show you how it works. 
So think of, uh, how many of you are familiar with writing Angular services? Okay. So Angular services is like just controller, but you want to write some logic inside that. You don't want to deal with the view. Controllers are used to manage views, right? You want to write a separate service, it just handles the logic, business logic. So I have written a sample, a sample service here. Uh, this is just doing addition of two numbers, and I'm going to test it through Karma Jasmine. So how I do that? I create a new test folder. And I'll say, first I need to in instantiate a new config file for Karma, which is very simple, Karma in it. How are we going with the time? We have 10 minutes left. So it says you want to use Jasmine, yes. This will require no, I don't want. Chrome, yes. Nothing else. Yeah, it's done. So it will create a new config file like this, right? And here you uh, you just need to take care of this file uh, object, and you want to include your ionic reference here, uh, which is under www lib ionic js ionic build.js <clears throat> also i have included angular mocks as a dependency here uh, you just need to do npm install angular mocks. This will allow you to mock some angular components which you don't have access to, so that you can use them in your test. So this you should include in your test. So here, think of this file array as an include, what you, all you want to include while you are running your test. So I definitely need ionic, I need angular mocks. Then I want to include my app.js. So everything is done. Now I'm uh, going to include my test folder. Test star 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 dot js. Include all the test files. Here. So if you see, I've already created a test folder here, and it has a uh, Jasmine test test written. So it is, what it is doing is, it is, I'm not going to type because we are running short of time. So it is including my controllers module, which has all the controllers in it. It is uh, injecting my services, which I want to test. So the name of the services, if you see, is my calci, right? And it 
there is writing uh, BDD kind of test where I'm just checking call to add and then it is returning a promise so that's why I'm using then and then expect result to be equal to 9 and because it's an asynchronous call if you go back to the service I'm using timeout that reply after two seconds so I can play around with timeout which is mocked by the angular mocks function so that I can control it I'm saying after 2001 milliseconds what will happen this call will succeed and it will respond so then I write an assertion and check the result to be 9 so karma chart karma js reference of internet. No, as we have to include Angular as well in the testing frame. So we have one minute left. So. So yeah, it executed. I had written the paths wrong. So you see that it is executing. And while you edit the code, this keeps on running. It, uh, I'm going to go to service and change this to minus. It failed. So I'm going to quickly finish with what I have. So I didn't talk about the uh, uh, services which access the native uh, uh, APIs, right? So this is the site for NG Cordova. They have abstracted out all the uh, PhoneGap plugins into Angular JS format. They give you a wrapper in the form of Angular services, and you can access all the PhoneGap functionality through that. So you write everything under Angular uh, convention, and you need not worry about uh, if some third-party developer has written a framework under some using jQuery or something. They give an abstraction out of that. Ionic view, we don't have internet working. I can show that you just need to run Ionic upload uh, under your app, and it will give you uh, an access to an ID. You can share it with your friends, and you can play around and download the app there and then. No need to sign up for developer account. Uh, you can have the whole app working. Uh, that's Ionic view. Ionic creator is the online SDK for drag and drop. Uh, kind of functionality. Internet is not working. I should have shown that as well. 
and my Mac has hung. Yeah, so these are the resources, ionicframework.com, ionic.io. CodePen.io slash ionic is a very good point of having code pens or some snippets of code for all the functionality which you need. Some would, someone would have you know, uploaded a template or a snippet for what you are looking for. Uh, plural side, this uh, video tutorials are very good. You can download them or buy them online. Uh, that's it, I guess. Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter on Rajat uh, NSIT and hope you enjoyed the session. I know a lot of things are breaking, but uh, that's the whole point of Ionic, just building mobile apps or right out of the box and distributing to your friends without the hassle of owning a developer account of Apple and, or Android. Thank you. So uh, uh, that's the... The feature is in alpha right now. Uh, the Ionic analytics push and the deploy, these are the online services which the team is providing apart from the open source framework. And these uh, services will be paid because they are as a service. So that's how their business model is working to release a open source framework for the community and just give add-on paid features. The analytics would work as the same way as parse analytics are working or crash analytics or any other web analytics are working. Any other questions? It is uh, very easy because they have provided uh, delegates, if you have heard of, about delegates, they have provided delegate services for all the components as well. So get, you get all the events fired that's scrolling up, scrolling down, scrolling is stopped. So everything you can do. With Backbone, I have not worked with Backbone, but uh, it's totally on Angular convention. So I don't know how Backbone uh, integrates with Angular. Uh, but why, why you want? Oh, you have worked on Backbone. OK. Yes. Somehow, if you can extract this, their CSS and put it into another uh, project which you are using with Backbone, you can do that, but that's nasty. <clears throat> yeah, so if you go to ng Cordova, they have a lot of features. They, they have a plugin for Touch ID as well, Apple's Touch ID. Geolocation, camera, SQLite inside the app, not the web SQLite. Uh, they have all the plugins for that. Yes? So it depends on your, uh, the use case, right? If you're using a web view, uh, how are you using it? You are using it into different uh, uh, places, and the whole app is driven by native features, then you don't have any option, right? Because you have to use a web view component there. But if your whole app has just the navigation handled by the native features and the content, the whole screen content is handled by web view, then Ionic is a good option. I gave a Chrome configuration in the Karma config, right? 
if you read about Karma, they have all the they have option for Phantom JS as well. So I just entered Chrome, so it launched the Chrome launcher, and it ran the test there. And uh, yeah, that's a good question. Angular material is kind of CSS only. This gives you out of the box publish, view, and phone gap native components abstracted out in Angular fashion. But uh, the, what did you say? Uh, Google material, Angular material. It's just the CSS. It doesn't give you a bridging between native features and all, and the CLI tool. Yes, you you can include material inside an Ionic app and discard the Ionic CSS. That would be a good option. Yeah, a lot of apps. You can just visit their website and see the examples. Thank you.